you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. What is going on guys? Brahma18 here. Thank you for joining me on what is episode 16 of our AC Milan career mode series on FIFA 20. We are now into the month of October and we're starting to press on with the season. Got a whole range of stuff to go through today. Uh, we're going to have the Fiorentini game. We're going to simulate the Spal Parma game. We'll play CSK in Moscow. And then we'll get into the start of November as well. Uh, see what we can do here. Maybe play another one of these games or two. Sim another one really just want to try and press along with the season before this big run comes up into Milan and Juventus double header. So, it's quite a few games to get through today, as I already noted, and there's uh, a few stuff we are going to look at. For one, at some point in this episode, not in the first uh, fixture, but at some point we will play the uh, 4-3-2-1 formation of Carlo Ancelotti, the Christmas tree as it was known back from his uh, days as AC Milan manager. Um, I do have a video out about this on how to recreate it in FIFA. So if you haven't already watched that, uh, I'll leave a link or leave a card here uh, and maybe leave a link in the description as well. Um, and you can go and check that out and recreate it for yourself. Um, so at some point in this episode, we will use that. Um, and also we've got, if we have a look here, um, we've also promoted Daniela Guidi. We've had our eye on him for a while, uh, as you will have seen. And uh, he looks okay. Five-star skill moves. Unfortunately, only two-star weak for a high-low defensive work rate, but we can uh, fix that. Right wing, left mid, cam right mid. So um, he looks okay, and he's certainly one that we can keep an eye on. Uh, we're going to try and develop him first before we try and bed him into the side. But, um, you know, not bad at all. So first off, we do have Fiorentina. This is the, the team I'm going with, by the way. We're going to stick with the 4-3-3 in this game. Um, and it's relatively the same. Otherwise, Rebic, Leao, Chiesa up front instead of, you know, what may have been like. So Calais on Haaland. Haaland a little bit tired, so left him out. Chiesa against his former club. I feel like he, uh, he can uh, do bits for us today. So we're walking into this game. Five wins out of six currently. We do have a game in hand over the likes of Roma Lazio. So if we do win, we can uh, level on points with them. Inter Milan still looking strong at the top of the table. Uh, Fiorentina, meanwhile, actually, I'd, if we get to look at them here. Where are they? They are 10th at the moment. Very inconsistent run. Three wins and three losses in their first uh, six games. So we'll see how this one plays out. They're very hit and miss. Hopefully they miss against us today and we can continue our uh, good run of form. So without further ado, let's get into the episode and get the momentum going. Oh, mistake from the Fiorentina defender. Leads Kessier in. He'll play through Leao. Missed. Rebic on the rebound. Poor... Oh, the space here for Rebic on that side. Found it as well. Right back, can't keep up with him. Rebic has an opportunity. Oh, for f sake. They can't score one on ones. He was able to go in and make the challenge and make it a good one. Oh, look at the, the space he's found here. It's Damari Gray, I think, actually, playing for Fiorentina. I don't know what he's doing here. He'll go for goal. It's saved. Rebound. Calabria can't jump high enough. And Fiorentina, undeservedly, with their first shot of the game, go 1-0 up. We've had three one-on-ones, miss them all. And Fiorentina run at the other end of the pitch and score. So disappointing. Leao and Rebic just bottled it in front of goal. We should be 3-0 up. And Calabria here, he just, doesn't, he just can't compete with him in the air. It's a 50-50 ball and he just doesn't jump high enough, doesn't have the height. So disappointing. Can't believe the space we allowed in behind him, though, to uh, to let Gray run in. That's really, really poor. And Fiorentina take an undeserved lead. They find themselves 1-0 up. Piquetta going to look for Chiesa. That's the ball. Oh, it's not Chiesa, it's Tanali. What is he doing in this position? He finds himself one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, my God! Oh, given straight away. Come on, you've got to be more alert there. Oh, there's players free. He's found space and he'll score, obviously, 2-0. Wow, I can't believe this. How easily we've given the ball away there. Fiorentina 
scrap to win somehow. Look at this poor defending, so bad. Giovanni Simeone is in, and he can score a one-on-one, -on -one, but our players can't. I can't believe how we've just thrown this game away. So disappointing, yet again. Calleon running up players. Brilliant individual skill shown. Still going. He'll pass it across goal. Chiesa's in against his former club. 2-1. And we're back in it. That's the way to do it. Calleon chose a mo moment of brilliance. And he can just lay it along to Chiesa. Good running from him. And finally we got a goal. Unfortunately it's taken them to score two in order for us to wake up. But so far so good for us. Calleon to Haaland. We're so good at breaking on teams here. Can we show it again here? Haaland running in now. He's got the pace on him. And he's going to send it to Chiesa. It's a horrendous ball. That is an absolutely awful ball. But the chance is still on. He'll chip it. Far post. Paqueta. Oh, my God. For f sake. Can he come back into Haaland here? He can. Haaland's through on goal. This time, another one-on-one. -on -one. Please don't bottle it. Oh, he hasn't, thank God. Shows him how to do it, and it's 2-2. But well, we need to push for a winner. It's not enough to draw here. We've had so many chances. We've got to beat teams like this. Erling Braut Haaland shows him how to do it. But we've five minutes to go plus stoppage. Can we bag a winner? Oh, that's good play. Chiesa. Kessier. Calabria, everyone bombing forward, including Calleon. That's the ball, and Calleon's in here to make it free. Oh, my word. Hello, everyone. It's me in post-editing form yet again. Uh, two episodes in a row with technical issues. You just could not write it. Turns out it was at this point when my audio uh, messed up and stopped working. So, unfortunately... I can't show you the rest of the game in terms of the live reaction, but I can show you the goal. Because thankfully, my capture card was still recording. Turns out, in the 94th minute, we did run up the other end and bag a winner. As you can see here, Calleon feeding it through to Erling Braut Haaland. A sweaty goal, yes, because that's just how I score my goals. Because for some reason, I can't score one-on-ones anymore, as you can clearly see. Um, and that meant that we actually came away with all three points. So it wasn't quite as bad as I was letting on in the game. So with that being said, having showed you the goal now, I will now resume back to where we was in the episode when we resumed recording. So we're now going to simulate. We've got uh, international break ahead of us, uh, monthly scouting updates, etc., so we're going to have a look into that. Got the training to do just before the spell game comes upon us. So first of all, let's just do the training here very, very quickly. Then we can have a look at the monthly sky report. You can sort of, um, you know, get a get a feel for my sort of the way I do things and the way I have a look at things in terms of the youth scouting. So anyone with 94, basically, we sign. Anyone with below 94, uh, we reject. Even if it's 93, 92, etc. Doesn't matter to me. They've got to have... 94 as a bare minimum by the way as you will have noticed we have sort of uh, changed a couple of countries um someone asked if i could do romania uh, just scout in romania so i thought yeah why not you know we'll just rotate it around otherwise you know we are scouting in holland as well and um and also in uh, italy so very very standard we yet to have a a new uh, monthly report. In fact, you can have the have a look at the last one, and I can show you sort of what we've got here. Um, so we've got a few players sort of getting closer, uh, still waiting on them. This guy, Alessandro Giordano, he's very, very close to uh, getting a promotion actually, because raise his minimum potential just a little bit, um, then we can definitely take a chance on him. Same here, Adriano Amaral, a bit small though, so we'll see how that one goes. But uh, elsewhere, like I say, lots of uh, lots of players, you know, really, um, really pushing, knocking at the door, so we can keep an eye on that. So we come on to this spell game now. We'll keep with the four-three-three. We are going to make some changes based on the last game. Harland and Calleon came on in the last game. Of course, we haven't seen all of it um, and played really well. So we'll keep them in the side. Um, we'll keep Rebic in the team. Bring in Mandragora for Tonali and Lazal for Hernandez. Uh, we'll bring in Caldara for Romagnoli. 
Uh, what else? Anything else that we can really sort of um, have a look at? No, that 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 should be okay to be honest. We can go with that. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna sim this game against Spal today. So if we uh, if we do that, hopefully we can pick up another win there on a losing streak. That doesn't bode well for us. Um, so we do get the win, Rebic and Kaleon in the end with the goal. So that's a good, secure and solid 2-0 win. So we'll take that all day long. And we do move in to the uh, Champions League games now. We are going to play this game against CSK Moscow today. Hopefully things go a bit better than they have been um, already. And uh, as alluded to at the start of the episode, we are this time going to switch to the Christmas tree formation. So we'll see how this one plays out. Of course, the first time we'll be using it in this career mode. So, um, you know, whether or not the team and the, and the personnel we've got available can uh, gel with it. Oh, what, what's happened there? There we go. Um, you know, is, is a matter that we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So let's have a look at the lineup. We'll do the lineup alongside each other. I'll tell you what, we'll keep these two in. Cardala's looking a little bit tired. And Anders and Calabria can stay in. Um, in terms of the holding midfielder, We'll go with uh, we'll go with Mandragora for this one. Actually, Kessier can be our box of box midfielder, um, and then our more aggressive midfielder. Could we put Tonali in that role, um, or could we put Mandragora? In fact, I tell you what, we'll put. To, oh no, actually, yeah, we'll keep Mandragora there as sort of the deep line playmaker. I think that really suits him. And Tonali can be that more, um, you know, sort of ball winning player. I think he can do that role perfectly fine. And having a look at these two cams, we've got one who's more of a free roam, one who's more of a, um, you know, a boxer box man. The left-sided player is more of a boxer box man. So maybe we go with Kaleon. He's very much, um, you know, good in that um, in that area, sort of covering ground and stuff. And Chiesa can be that more of that free roam player. And then we'll keep Haaland up front as well as the target man. Um, looking on the bench, just see what we've got here. Probably want wing backs. Uh, Rebic, can he stay in? Do we want Do we want anyone else in here? Maybe a Bonaventura, perhaps. Paqueta can stay in. Leao as well. Um, you know, I think that should be okay. Maybe we do put Benacer in, in fact, instead of uh, Paqueta. And we can go with that. So we'll see what this formation offers us in this new style. In the, Well, in this new team in career mode today. If the personnel that we've got can uh, adapt to it, let's give it a go. Um, we are at home against CSK Moscow. A win. We'll put us, um, you know, six points clear of them and give us another opportunity in the Champions League group stage. So, without further ado, let's get into this game. A huge night at a great stadium. We're here at the San Siro. I'm Derek Ray, and with me in the commentary position is the former Arsenal and England fullback Lee Dixon. And we're certainly in the mood for Champions League group stage action. It's Milan against CSKA Moscow. Yeah, Derek, thanks. You can't really go on and win tournaments unless you're consistent in the group stages. Very important you don't drop points. Looking forward to this one. And Milan's lineup looks like this. The goalkeeper is the precocious Gianluigi Donnarumma. Alessio Romagnoli plays alongside Thiago Silva in central defence. And they line up with just the one striker looking to do a bit of damage. This is the lineup for the visitors today. 
I'll tell you what, you don't see this formation every day of the week. No, I mean, it looks very attack-minded with the three up front. The three in midfield supplying the width as well, but I'm a little bit worried about the three centre-backs. Will they get exposed in the wide areas? Come on then, let's have another win today. Champions League group stage confrontation. Their opponents to come on to them. Useful looking position, you've got to say. Haaland. Good run from Chiesa. Back to Haaland. What a flick. Great chance. Great goal. Lovely well worked goal for AC Milan. And Erling Braut Haaland is a man on the end of it. He's in clinical form at the moment and he continues that today. And watch the build up play to this. It's brilliant. Bit of interchange from those two Erling Braut Haaland and. Federico Chiesa and there's no stopping that shot unleashes it the keeper is not going to get to it it's been a good start for us we've dominated the majority of possession and now we've got a goal to show for it Erling Braut Haaland makes it 1-0 to Milan so the game has been restarted it's Milan in front here Kaya Horn here Kaya Horn storming forward Chiesa he's going to try and run off him now and that's a ball. He'll look to return it into Kalayan. Can he make it too? Yes, he can. Once again, we're so deadly attacking at pace. But it's those two in more central areas this time because of the formation. They're playing left and right attacking midfield. And that's why you see Kalayan and Chiesa not only closer to each other, but also in more central areas. And it's worked off. It's worked like a treat, actually. And this time it's Calleon on the score sheet. Chiesa involved with an assist yet again. And it's been a great first half for us. Got to say the formation working really well. Jose Calleon on the stroke of half time. Makes it 2-0. Kessier. Kessier. Chiesa. Going to storm into these central areas now. He's got runners either side. We go to Calleon. Great one too with Chiesa. Shall I square it? Shall I go? I'll square it. And there it is. 3-0. <laughs> I just love my sweaty goals. Absolutely love them. I don't trust us to score one on ones anymore, I've got to say. So that's the best option. Um, this time, Chiesa, yes, again, three assists. He's having a brilliant game. Callion involved as well. And Haaland to finish it off. Those three are really loving life at the moment. The way they're playing together, the interchange, the quality of um, communication between them and link of play has been superb. Absolutely superb um, and I've got to say really really pleased with how it's going and in this formation they seem to be relishing getting closer to each other and uh, playing off each other it's going very very well 3-0 now and uh, it's looking very good just calmly passing it about at the moment waiting to probe for that opening Mandragora into Kessier good run from Chiesa can he make it four yes he can 4-0, Federico Chiesa finally gets his goal that he has so much deserved in this game today. And that's, again, really nice play. Just runs off. We're patiently building up, waiting, probing for an opening with that possession. And finally, Chiesa makes that penetrating run in behind the defence. Space left as they're trying to mark men. And Chiesa, there's no mistaking that finish on his weaker foot. It doesn't matter. It's a nice finish into the bottom right-hand corner. And we are pleased, very, very pleased with how it's gone today. Federico Chiesa, with his third goal in the Champions League, makes it 4-0. Really oh, lovely from Chiesa. Oh. Well, there it is. Full time. Fantastic result, that is. A wonderful performance. So much better than that Fiorentina performance, for sure. A lot more clinical. And you know what? That man right there, man of the match for sure. Three assists and a goal. Federico Chiesa. He was really in his element today. Really in his element. He played so well. The whole team just played superb, to be honest. It's got to be said. And it's a convincing win to put us onto six points uh, out of a possible nine in these first few games. And Chiesa, surprised he didn't get a 10, to be honest. It was a very, very good performance. And uh, we can move on. Back onto the league now and see where we are at next. Got to say, you know, um, I was a bit worried about how this personnel would sort of match up to the formation. Of course, you know, I've worked, you know, I've worked the formation and it was all well and good. But I was, I was worried about whether or not, um, you know, these players could settle in. It was the right personnel and stuff. But um, you know, based on that game, just it went fantastically. So we can, we can keep at it. To be honest, keep it going. Um, you know, just thinking about the. 
personnel here. We're going to sim this game against Palmer. So, you know, do we make a couple of changes? Maybe um, someone like Rebic uh, can come into the side. I can't even find him. Where's Rebic? Oh, there he is. Wow, Jesus. Um, so, yeah, we can we can bring him to the side, perhaps for um, uh, someone like Chiesa. Give him a rest. Um, maybe we bring in someone like Bonaventura as well, or Paqueta, actually, would probably be better. Uh, we can probably swap these two around. Um, and then we can bring Tonali in there. Oh, not there. Uh, we can bring Tonali in here, uh, and then take off Madrigora, bring in... Uh, what else do we have here? Just really looking for rotation. Maybe someone like Ben Acer. Um And then we can bring on, bring off Thiago Silva. Calabria can come in. Lazal for Hernandez as well. We can go with that. Again, like I say, just trying to keep things fresh. Keep the rotation going. Give people opportunities um, if and when I can. So away to Palmer. It's a tough game, to be honest. Palmer are a good side. Um, and they play well against good teams. But... We come out with flying colours. Caldara, Kessier and Ribic onto the score sheet. So the rotation pays off. And it means that we get another win onto our belt. So the league table at the moment looking like this. The two Milan clubs at the top of the table. Inter did actually draw a game. Let's have a look. Who was that against? I'm interested to see who has ended this winning run. It was Juventus actually. So that's actually a good result for Inter Milan. Away against Juventus. And they draw... You know, Juventus would have been thinking, you know, they needed to win that game. But they get a draw. So, uh, Inter Milan, absolutely loving life at the moment. We've got them next month as well. I'd like to uh, them for actually to continue their unbeaten run. And, and we can get a great chance at, at trying to end that, to be honest. Um, so, having a look at it, the league toll is all to play for. We'll probably get to the Sass, um, Sampdoria game even. And we'll probably simulate that one as well. And we'll come back into, uh, into these games. So, we're back shortly. So welcome back everyone. We are now at the Sampdoria game. This is the lineup we're going with. A few rotation yet again. Put Leao in, Cali on back in, etc. Mandragora is in. Um, Cardada comes out for Thiago Silva. Hernandez back in, etc. Um, like I say, just looking to keep things fresh, keep rotated. So we're going to sim this one as well. Just wondering whether I should play the return game against CSK in Moscow. We do have that one. It's a and this is a resounding 4 0 win, by the way. Ben Asser, Mandragora, and Kessier, all the centre mids on the uh, score sheet. And Leao pops up with a goal as well. We did get an injury to Bonaventura, I think. So let's have a look what's happening with that. Hopefully, it's not too long. Three weeks of a sprained ankle. That's not too bad. We can cope with that. You know, that's okay. Um, but, Leo, like I say, just wondering whether or not I should play this return leg against CSKA. Should I sim it? Leave it to the next episode. Um, you know, we will have Inter Milan and Juventus in the next episode. So, whether or not I'm going to go with that one is um, is the question. So, uh, first of all, let's just get to it. Um, see what else we've got sort of going on. And then we'll have a look at the league fixtures as well. Um, and see if um, see if it's worth it. So we'll have a look here in the uh, calendar. Uh, so we got CSK in Moscow, Cagliari. Uh, hmm, this is a tough one. Could leave it here. Um, perhaps we sim this game, and then in the next episode we'll have Cagliari. We'll sim that. Fenerbahce. We'll sim that, and then we'll play Inter Milan and Juventus because they are two massive, massive games that could um, you know effectively. Uh, influence our outlook on the entire season. So yeah, let's do that. We'll sim this game against CSK in Moscow. Um, we'll bring in some some uh, some players. Okies can come back in. Kalion, etc. We can bring in um, Tanali for Mandragora and Caldara for uh, Thiago Silva as well. I want to change the captain to Romagnoli. I don't want it on Tanali, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, I think we could be good to go with that. To be honest. Maybe uh, maybe Rebic can come on for uh, Conti. And, um, yeah, we're going to go with that. So we'll see my way to CSK in Moscow. Hopefully we can get another win, continue um, our run of good form. Also put us on nine points in the Champions League. It's going to be a tough ask, though. You know, CSK away is a very um, tough fixture. But they have lost all three of their first games. And they've lost another one today. Chiesa with two goals, Haaland with a goal, and Paqueta coming off the bench to get onto the score sheet as well. So that is a resounding 4-0 victory, and we are very, very pleased with that. So the good run of form does continue, and it's looking very healthy ahead for the next episode. We're currently 
second in the table still one point behind Inter Milan who are unbeaten but we will play against them next episode as we will also play against Piemonte Calcio aka Juventus as well in the next episode so we will play against first and third in episode 17 so what a blockbuster game that is going to be make sure you join me for that as we've also found ourselves a new formation that is an option ahead for that game so we'll see how that one plays out for sure it's going to be very interesting ahead of those two blockbuster features. But we are going to finish it off there, guys. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more regular content. I do apologise for our technical hiccup again. Hopefully, this doesn't become a recurring theme in the series. But unfortunately, these things do happen from time to time. But on that note, we are going to finish it off there. One thing I should probably mentioned beforehand we finished actually it's just a champions league table see where that that win leaves us so we're six points ahead of Fenerbahce um so one more win will see us or even a point will see us qualify so that's very good very good indeed of course Atletico Madrid we need to win that return fixture against them to stand a chance of winning the group which does of course influence our draw um ahead for the um for the knockout stages so of course Still a lot to play for. We want first place. Um, so we'll see how that one plays out. But on that note, we are finally going to finish off there. Thanks so much for watching if you made it through to the end. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Come on.